Okay, this next video, I'm going to try to get into somebody's mindset the burden that my property goes through. What you're looking at is the 6T. It isn't built per the master plan. The trouble is, what happened here 12 years ago is you had a blueprinted neighborhood which was represented by Sundance. Everything, everything left of this property line in those two states was blueprinted. Blueprinted, that means it detailed right down to the last, last detail. <clears throat> and then you marry it up against the golf course where there's no detail. You can't find really any detail on the golf course as to the plans. Uh, it's more or less it was left up to the creators of the golf course to shape this. But anyway, getting back to the safety issue of where I live and my two lots. My two lots are right here. I'm going to do a 360. I'm going to do a 360. There's my house. It's been hit. It's had a broken window in it. There's my second house, it's had broken windows. There's the third house, it's had broken windows. All three houses have had broken windows from this tee box. Now if you look off in the distance, that high ground, that, that in, the, in the background, that one highest tee box, they built that after I bought these lots. That wasn't there. That little elevated area, the hill was there, but the elevation and the tee box weren't. They built that a couple years after I bought. See the see the pretty the pretty. Maybe I'll time it just right so you can see the Bellagio water show that's about to happen on the ladies' tee box here. Well, anyway, right back there where you see that cart path making uh, a turn, right there on the curve of the cart path, oftentimes. Very often times, the tee boxes are put there. That means they're teeing off just a few feet inside of that curve, corner. Now, what's the cardinal rule that I always learn? I've been playing golf now for, what, 40 years? I've been playing golf 40, 45 years. What's the cardinal rule they taught you when you're playing golf? Never get down range with anybody about to hit a ball with a club in their hand. What I deal with in day in, day out, when you have a day where you sell, 50, say 150, you sell 150 greens fees, maybe 200 in one day. Do you have any, any idea how many tee shots are gonna be hit off these tee boxes with 200 players? 200 players will probably produce in one day 400 to 450 tee shots hit from this tees. Why? Because the mediocre players put for the first two or three into the lake. The next two or three are put up along here on the bank. Or they're hitting the house. Or what's the other? You have such a, uh, Jim McLean in his, his videotape on the golf swing calls of uh, corridor, corridors of success. When you put your club in different positions of the swing, if you've got your uh, club in the right position during the back swing, the start, the top, the finish, the down through, if your club's in that corridor of success, you'll have a chance to make a proper golf swing. Well, I'm going to tell you, I want to show you the narrow corridor of success the people from that curve have up there. You're on the curb. They stop at the turn. They walk in, and that's about, I think that's about 135 yards from the center of the green. Right there where the curve is, approximately 135 yards. Now, I want to, hear you to, I want to show you the corridor of success that they have to deal with on the way to the green. I want you to look down there at the cart path and, and recognize just how close. Here's my plant. There's my plant. I'll pan up. We're on the cart path. 
That right there represents about 50 or 60 feet. And the cart path is just to the right of the center line where the golf ball has to go. If your golf ball from that curve back there flies over a line, an imaginary line, say 10 feet south of that cart path, you're on line to hit the center of the green. But what happens when we get mediocre golfers? See, Charlie, when you go through, when Charlie Waters and the crew go through in the morning, they're all pretty good golfers. Some are scratch, some have been playing all their life, and they're playing, uh, you can almost count on them. Everybody has a mistake. All the time I see senior golfers, part of the men's club, they'll hit them up here along the, the bushes. But those aren't the nuisance or the problem here. The nuisance and problem, for me, I see that as not a tee box. I see that as a missile launch pad for am amateur missile launchers. You got some missile launchers that walk up to that tee box on that curb where the tees are right there, and here I am, downrange of them, <clears throat> and it's the sixth hole in their life that they've ever played. They walked into the clubhouse. They got a set of borrowed clubs that somebody gave them. They're 250 pounds. They're six foot three. They're the star linebacker on the high school football team. Like I said, they've never held a golf club in their life. They don't take them to the range. The people he's with are pretty good golfers and they don't like to go to the range they just want to get an early start get out there play the game so they tell this guy that's never held a golf club in his life you're not going to the range come on you'll pick it up on the way you're an athlete don't worry you'll figure it out so for six holes this guy is aimed he doesn't know how to aim his feet he doesn't know how to grip the club when he grips the club, he's squeezing it so hard that there's blood coming out the end of it. When he's standing over the ball, he stares at the ball for 10 minutes because he has no, no clue how I'm going to get that missile from here onto the green. So he stands there. He makes a couple of practice swings where there's absolutely no body turn. His shoulders don't turn a bit. You, you can see him. You got a 250 pound gorilla over there on that corner. And he's got a five iron in his hand or a seven iron in his hand. And on his practice swings, he's swinging as hard as he can, but his shoulders never move off parallel to the parallel of the ball of flight. He's going to do everything with his hands and shoulders because he doesn't dare turn away from the ball. He's been told, keep your eye on the ball. That means don't turn your shoulders away from it. Don't do anything. Well, anyway, getting along, I see I've got less than seven minutes left on this spiel, so I'll tie it up. But anyway, I have children in the family. I have two beautiful uh, uh, nieces, distant nieces, uh, my grandnephew's daughter. And they just think it's the coolest thing to come over to my house in the afternoon and water my plants. They see all these nice plants on the yard and they think, gee, and they ask me, can I water your plants? Uncle, can I water your plants? And you see them, and because the little one, four years old, and the seven-year-old helping her carrying this big water plant, and they're going down the line watering all of these, and I forget, it's my fault. I forgot where we are. I walk in the house for something, and I come out, look up on a tee box, and I've got four guys who each hit five balls each. They each hit five balls each. And not one of them had a golf swing. They were, it, it was like watching four happy Gilmores, and they had absolutely no concern for any of the private property, any houses, every time. So, <clears throat> that's what I live with day in and day out. Now, from that far tee box, right there, T 
to here, okay? There's a window. I guess I gotta go over. But from that far tee box right there, the high ground, the front of that far tee box, a guy named Ryan. Ryan uh, used to work in the pro shop. He was a tall, thin guy. He was on that tee one morning and he hit a ball that broke this small window. That ball broke this small window. The lady that was living here said it sounded like a gunshot went off. And she immediately came out, picked up the ball and went over there where I live and handed me the ball. Now, you want to tell me this is the line of flight? He hit a curveball. He hit a slice so bad that it curved around that corner. Line of sight that was have been impossible to hit that shot. And this tree right here wasn't really there. This was about four or five years ago, maybe six years ago. That was my first window that I got broken, was that one. So, as far as my lots, how vulnerable, I want to show you how vulnerable my lots are to every shot that comes off these tee box. To that one, that one, the far one, everywhere, if somebody makes an error, if somebody makes a mistake, if they miss hit the ball, they've only got this much golf course. And here's my yard. I've already had that window broken, so the possibilities of a ball hitting anything in my yard, they've already proved from that tee box to that window, that's the possibilities. That's the end of the bell-shaped curve, and it isn't even the end of the bell-shaped curve, because I saw a, a golfer a couple years ago hit one from that tee box under that, that bedroom window to the right, and with no hesitation, with a complete impunity, confidence, I call it gall myself, with complete gall, he nonchalantly walked up underneath that window right there and picked up his ball. Now everybody thinks, well, what are you doing taking pictures of my name? I'm trying, I'm, the only reason I'm here is to illustrate the range of possibility of balls coming off these tee box. Every ball that comes off this tee box has the potential of taking out a window. And if it's a child or a person, or say if I'm throwing a little patio party, I have to tell everybody on the patio, don't ever take your eyes off the tee box. Don't ever take your eyes off the tee box. If you see somebody, whatever you're doing, if you're reading, if you're whatever, stop and watch every shot. And when the golfers pass, and then be aware of the tea box again.